Isaiah 29. Joel, the 29th book of the Bible. Woe to Ario. Now, Ario is a city. It is meaning the Lion of God. To Ario, the city where David dwelt. Add ye year to year, let them kill sacrifices. Yet I will distress Ario. All right, woe is troubling news. A wake up call to a city. Kill the sacrifices. Do what you're supposed to. Do what the law says, yet I will distress Ariel. It has become so sinful, despite what you're going to do that's right, you're in trouble. And there are Christians out there who are saved. Who, when the rapture happens, will end up in the clouds and at the judgment seat of Christ. And they do all they're supposed to do, but yet they're in trouble. They believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, yet they'll be in distress. I will distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, not joy and, and rejoicing, and shall be unto me. As Ario. There's going to be a lot of Christians like that to judge the seat of Christ. Heaviness and sorrow. I will camp. God it will God saying, I will camp against thee. Around about. Jeremiah 52, verse 4. And will lay siege against thee with a mount. Now with a mount means that the army will come with dirt, rocks, whatever they do, whatever they do. To build a, a, a hill. And this was a treacherous job in a city. I mean, you got people on the wall throwing stuff at you. And your job is to bring this stuff up so you can make a hill, a great hill, that you just can walk up it and climb over the city. And I will raise forts against thee. So here is a city that God, it's in Jerusalem. It's in Israel. It is known by David. And God's against it. Thou shalt be brought down. Lamentations 2, 10 to 12, uh, 2, 20 to 22, and 3, 29. And shall speak out of the ground. They're so low that... They're, they're, they're in the dirt. Trenches. Of World War I, I believe it is. They would dig holes in the ground that was deep enough that you would just have the head poke, poking out. And you could shoot at the enemy. So they were lowered in the ground and their voices. It all comes out of the King James Bible. And thy speech shall be low out of the dust. Quiet. I mean, you don't want the enemy to hear you. They, and thy voice shall be as one that has a familiar spirit. I don't understand. Out of the ground. And thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. Maybe somebody who has these familiar spirits, maybe they talk in a low voice. I don't. I never visited one. I never had any part in any of them. Maybe they whisper. Maybe they don't want God to hear them. I don't know. Moreover, the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust, and the multitude of the terrible ones shall be as chaff that passes away. Not much. Useless. No good value. Yea, it shall be at an instant suddenly. Not going to be within time. But quick. Thou shalt be visited. Visitation. Of the Lord of hosts. 
All right, with Thunder. You know, Thunder can shake a house. Can shake the windows. And with Earthquake. Revelation 16, 19. Not only can Thunder shake the windows, an Earthquake can shake your house. A great noise. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Thunder, Earthquake, and a... You think the thunder is bad, there's also a great noise. What is that noise? With storm and tempest, rain, wind, and a flame of devouring fire. You remember when there was another time where there was a storm and, and lightning bolts that the Bible says ran along the ground? That was back in Egypt. They said it was hot thunderbolts. And it ran along the ground. Like how these people are. They're, they're along the ground. The multitude of all the nations that fight against Ariel. So, nations will fight against the city. Even all that fight against her and her munition, that's her armament. That's her buildings where she's got her ar uh, uh, arrows, bows, swords, that distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. It shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth. Zechariah 14.1 and behold, he eateth in his dream. He's gone to sleep. Oh, no, 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 mistake. Mm. But when he waketh, his soul is empty. Ariel's going to be like, oh, we're going to, great victories. Oh, how great we are. And then they're going to wake up. And reality is, they're gone. For as a thirsty man drinketh. A dreameth, and behold, he drinketh, but he awaketh, and behold, he is faint, and his soul has appetite. So shall the multitude of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Now here is a, here are the armies coming against Jerusalem. They got big ideas, big dreams. And nothing's going to come of them. God's going to protect the city. No matter what they want. No matter what they think. No matter what ideas they have. Stay yourselves and wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken. Uh oh. That's what we read last night about Ephraim. But not with wine. They staggered. But not with strong drink. That's not what we read last night. Last night we read they were vomiting and having filth on tables. The priest and the prophet. Jeremiah 12, 37 to 40. For the Lord has poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep. Oh, I wish I had that spirit sometime. Oh, I wish I had that spirit after a hard day's night. Come home and... Oh. But this is not the kind of deep sleep you want. Saul and his army had this, this deep sleep when David and his men came in and grabbed the bolster and, and the spear. I believe this kind of deep sleep was also when, when I forget what the army was, but when the angel of the Lord came and destroyed. And has closed your eyes. John 12, 37 through 40 and Acts 13, 8. The Lord has done this. And when the Lord closes your eyes and, and gives you deep sleep, you have no idea what's around you. You have no idea what the dangers are. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. Well, we read that about the priests. And the prophets, 
of Ephraim last night. Now here's the educated. The vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Revelation 5, 2 through 10. Which men deliver to one that is learned, educated. Saying, read this I pray thee. And he that's educated said, I cannot, for it is sealed. There was a sealed book, and no one could open the book, and John wept. And then came the lion of the tribe of Judah and unsealed the book. It is the uneducated. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned. Saying, read this, I pray thee. And he says, I'm not learned. Can't read. Illiterate. That's the spirit of sleep, and that's the spirit of, of closed eyes. They can't read the book. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, I'm a Christian. I pray. I have a King James 611 Bible. And with their lips do honor me. Praise Jesus. But have removed their heart far from me. It's a lip service. Their heart is not in. Their motivation is not for the Lord. It's for self. And I know a particular man that's in that case right now. He had the lip service. He had the mouth service, but his heart wasn't in it. And guess what? The Lord had to put a waking into his life. Harsh. Don't become disobedient to God that he has to do this to you. But now his eyes are open. Now he reads the Bible and see what's going on. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And all the traditions that the Pharisees taught the people. You know, if you don't wash your hands before you eat, God's going to kill you. You know, if you walk so far and carry a bed, God's going to throw down fire and execute your butt. That's the, that's the wrong fear of God. If you don't give your money, God's going to give you a disease and, and break your car down and divorce. No, that's the wrong fear. There is a fear of God, but that's using man trying to get you to fear God for man's advantage. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this, this people. I think the last chapter he said a strange act. But here is a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish. There will be no more wise men. And the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. You won't be able to find the prudent man. He'll be gone. Woe, another woe, unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. And they say, Who seeth us? And who knoweth us? Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, behold the evil and the good. In Jeremiah's time, he was went into this dark chamber, and they were smoking and watching movies upon the, upon the walls. I think, God doesn't see us. God is watching the whole thing. Don't you think you're ever out of the view of God? Psalms records that even the Holy Spirit is down in hell. Omnipresent. That's the Spirit of God. If the Holy Spirit is everywhere omnipresent, so is God. Don't you think you're smart enough and wise enough and prudent enough to think that you're getting away with something? You may have an earthly judge Give you a little slap on the pinky. You wait to God. 
You better fear the God that is watching you. You better watch out. You better not help. I'm telling you why. God is watching. He knows when you're doing everything. Whether it's evil or whether it's good. God knows. Know that in your life. Well, uh, surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For it shall the work, the clay, the vessel being made. Say to him that made it, the, the potter, he made me not. Imagine a pot that's made by God. God didn't make me. Evolution did. Oh, we call it theistic evolution. God made me, but he just let us go. And See, we're doing it our way, not God. It's our church. It's our pastor. It's me. It had nothing to do with God. Oh, yeah. Our lip service, it's, it's God. It's a Bible church. It's... it's, it's the Holy Spirit, it's Jesus, but in reality, what we're learning, it's all about man. It's big lip service. And God is not in it. That's what Ariel's problem was. It was all man and no God. Or shall the thing frame say to him that framed it, like a picture? He has no understanding. Romans 9.20 You're inside a wood frame with glass or whatever they had back then. And you're the one saying, he don't know what he's doing. He has no idea what he's doing. You're the one that's been put into a place that you can't move. And yet the person that made you has the ability to move you where he wants you. But he has no understanding. There are some people out there who profess to be Christians and think God is stupid. Why? You think so? How come they have their own Bibles? God's so stupid, he doesn't know how to speak English. So we'll update the King's English into the modern version. Have you ever read some of those modern versions? They're just as hard to read than the, than the King James English. But see, God's stupid. They're saying to the one that made the word of God, we can do better. We can have better church services than what the Bible says. We can have our programs. We can do things that God, you know, God always much better. We'll bring all the people to church and have vast thousands upon people. And then make them, then make them think they're saved and they're really not saved. So they can get a Tootsie Roll Pop. Or a plastic water pistol. Or get fun in the playground. To, to, to get their turn to ride on a swing and go down a, a, a slide or whatever you have to, for playtime. Or even have alcohol in your church for the teenagers. And the rock music for the teenagers. After all, we'll use their ways and bring them to Jesus. See, God, our way is much better. Look at all the people that are sitting in our church. And I ain't heard a man today. I was arrested for DUI five times, but yeah, I go to church. Don't say that to anybody. You make me look bad. I'm living right. To the best ability that God's given me. Is it not yet a, a very little while? Very little while. Not little while. Very little while. And Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field. I don't know what Lebanon looks like. I haven't seen pictures. But a fruitful field. Flowers. Berry, beauty, and the fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest, tree, so much growth, 
But it's not trees, it's a it's a field. And in that day, uh oh, shall the deaf hear the words of the book, the book that we just read about in verse 11, 12. I thought they were too smart to open the, to open the seals. I thought they were so uneducated they, they couldn't learn it. The deaf will hear the words of the book. The eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. So what were two of the things that Jesus did in his healing ministry? He had the deaf hear and he had the blind to see. And throughout the book of Acts. And the word of God grew. The meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord. And so blessed are the meek and the Beatitudes. Came out of the Old Testament. And the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. The poor in the tribulation are the ones who have not received the mark and can't buy and sell and are running from the Antichrist. There's two classes of people in the tribulation. You're rich or you're poor. There is no middle class. There is no middle ground. You either have the mark or you don't. And Jews will not have the mark. It is forbidden for a Jew who wants to do right under the law. He cannot receive that mark. Now if he wants to do wrong and sin, he'll receive the mark. But most of them will not. For the terrible one, the Antichrist, is brought to naught, nothing, built, nada. And the scorner, <laughs> you get a guy who scorns you, you know, witnessing, the scorner is consumed. They run over to John chapter 3 about being condemned. He that has the son shall not be condemned, but he that has not the son shall be condemned, and the wrath of God abideth upon him. And all that watch for iniquity are cut off. All those that want to do sin will be cut off. So they're watching for them. They're watching to kill somebody. They're watching to steal. They're watching for some evil deed that make a man an offender for a word. You become guilty because a word. And lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate. What's that? That's a street preacher. That is somebody who's in the gate of sin. He said, repent. Jeremiah. Isaiah. And what does it say? Lay a snare. Try to set traps. I'm going to try to get him mad. I'm going to get in your face and say, you're yelling at me. Trying to get you angry, trying to get the cops come, trying to get you arrested, trying to get you involved in breaking the law. That's the whole thing. Trying to get you in trouble, trying to get you to lose your temper. Hey, if I throw a beer on him, then maybe they'll think he was drinking. And turn aside the just. For a thing of naught. Taking those who are done right, who, who are right before God, and turning them to that which is vain and nothing. Woe unto you, Jesus said, with the little ones, it's better for you to have a millstone tied about your head than to, be, to offend one of them. Woe and offenses will come, but be ye not part of the offense. There are some presidents that have to be shot. You better not have been the one that pulled the trigger. Better somebody else than you. There are some people out there who are to start a church and pervert, prevent the people. You better not be that preacher. There are some people who will bow down before Satan to get a seat in office in a government. Don't you be that person. And there are people in churches today when a Christian who wants to do right and they lead them astray and turn them around and go back the wicked way. That's what's happening here. 
Therefore, thus saith the Lord, who redeemed Abraham, Jewish, concerning the house of Jacob, Jewish, Jacob shall not now be ashamed. Not now. They're ashamed right now. They were ashamed to be Jews in World War II that they changed their name. A lot of the Jewish names today were changed during World War II to protect their identity. Neither shall his face now wax pale. That's the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. At that moment when Jesus comes, here is our Messiah. All right, we're saved. Glory to God, here he is finally. Now we have our Messiah. Now we have victory over the nations. Now Rome is down, or Babylon, on the seven mountains. That's what they wanted Jesus to do the first advent. But see, now he's Ariel. He's the Lion of God. Before he was just the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. Even James and John, Lord, you can call fire down. You don't know what spirit you are of. I've come to save people that they may have life and have life more abundant. When I call fire down, that's when I will come back and you'll be on horseback, James and John. But right now, but when he seeth his children, the work of my hands, in the midst of him, they shall sanctify my name and sanctify, set apart the Holy One of Jacob, and shall fear the God of Israel. What a glorious time to, for those Jews to be when Jesus comes and they say, That is God, that is the Messiah, we are sorry, and they repent and they get right. And then we break off into singing in all the world in the millennium. They also shall, they also that erred, erred in spirit shall come to understanding. Remember, remember, knowledge is what you know. Wisdom is, is how to apply what you know. And understanding the Bible is your relationship to God. The relationship to God here is that we've done wrong. If somebody comes to that understanding, even today in the church age, that they have erred, they have sinned, oh, there is so much hope. The blessed hope of the Lord Jesus Christ, our great God and Savior. And they that murmured shall learn doctrine. <laughs> Look at that. Those that murmured in the wilderness, huh? they got fire, they got judgment, they got angry God. Not this time. You know, be murmuring through the, the tribulation and then say, oh, is God really going to come? God really going to take care of us? Oh, 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 oh. God will warn you before judgment comes. And when judgment comes, God just may just put you to sleep. And you don't even can't in, not understand the word. Even if you read the Bible, put your life in such blackness, you don't even know where to turn. You don't even know where you're going. You don't know if it's day, you don't know if it's night. But if you repent and get right, God will fulfill the light in your life and return to you.